This is a tutorial on creating a site map. It's using Illustrator CC and Photoshop CC. You can use either piece of software. Uh, you get a little bit different effects on both of them. I'm going to make this, try to make it a little fast. So we're in Illustrator. I have my toolbar set to double. Some of the um, uh, windows I'll be using uh, will be character, which you can get from window type character. Also the Pathfinder we'll be using and we'll be using some of the tools in the toolbar. First tool we're going to use is the uh, rectangle shape tools and instead of um, the first rectangle I'm going to create is going to represent the actual home page because everything revolves around the home page. Everything's connected to the home page. And I'm going to use the rounded rectangle for that. One thing about the uh, rounded rectangle tool is when you're pulling the rectangle, you have the up and down arrows on your keyboard. That'll make, you can make this go all the way right into a circle. You know, if you really want to customize, or a square, if you really want to customize. So there's my shape, and what I'm going to do next is come over to the, I don't want white for the center color. I'll take some type of a uh, color like that. And if I wanted to put a outline around it, if we look at what it looks like now with no out, well, there is an outline. If this would be without an outline. So if I want to put an outline on, come up here, make sure it's selected. That always helps. And increase the size, say to four. Now I have this icon could represent my um, home page. Now if I wanted to give it like a little bit of a 3D effect on a Mac, I, you'd, I'd be using a modifier key, which on a Mac would be option. And I just grab it and pull it and it makes a copy. I'm not exactly sure what the modifier key is on a PC, but you can always just go up to Edit, Copy, and Edit, Paste up here. I'll do the keyboard commands. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to make this a ghosted image in the background is I'm going to come up to Window, go to Transparency, open up that window, pull it over here, Now that's on top. I don't want it on top. I want it behind. So object, arrange, send to the back. Now that's more like what I wanted. Now I just grab that and do the exact same thing for copying. I'm not making a big uh, site here. Oh, did I, I didn't grab the background on that one. I have to select both by holding shift. I'm only going to make uh, three pages coming off of it. Again, it happened. Well, I'll just copy the background and pull it over. So what's missing now would really be uh, text and lines connecting. So here's a line segment tool. It's at four points up here. Uh, I can keep it with this color, which is the outline color. And here's my connections. A little sloppy. So the other thing that is really uh, uh, good about Illustrator is that you can use the Pathfinder tool to make your own shapes. So say if I wanted to create a uh, some type of a shape. Uh, what I'm going to do is get rid of that red color. rectangle tool. You can only do this with two shapes. And you have to have them both selected when you're using the, the Pathfinder tool. And this is really, really handy. So you come up to the Pathfinder tool and you see, you know, that's meshing. You can tell by looking at the actual icon. Go backwards. You know, the icon's going to tell you what it does just by looking at it. So you can make some 
you know, uh, customized type shapes. And you can see here with what it's doing here how this would work, you know, with a logo or something. The Pathfinder tool is a great tool uh, to do like a negative positive type logo. But I wouldn't really use that for, um, you know, in this type of a case. I probably might make something uh, that looked more like this. You know, if it was uh, some type of some type of an icon that's going to represent something that's within the navigational scheme, and. Didn't work. There we go. There we go. So now I have it. Uh, if this is some type of another page, or and then what you might do with these different shapes is have some maybe make some type of a really light box and have almost like a key to what using the square rectangle to what the shapes are uh, here and uh, what they you know what they mean what they represent so the other part that, which I haven't done yet would be adding text and that's a good enough typeface make sure it's on top and it is if it was on the underneath and I couldn't see it, I would just come up to Object, Arrange, Bring to the Front. If I do Send to the Back, that's what I was hoping it wouldn't be. If I get that, I'd do Bring to the Front, and I have it. So I'd use the uh, do the same thing for the uh, uh, for the other pages. Or now here's another thing you could do. You could shear it maybe to put a little. Um, uh, perspective in it or whoop, not that shear tool you know there's a lot of things you could do with it you know also you can just if you wanted to you could uh, instead of doing a horizontal orientation you could just come over here to rotate and decide you want to do a vertical. Obviously, you'd have to change the text. So now we're off to Photoshop. Leaving Illustrator. Okay, so over here we have basically pretty much the same, a similar type setup. You know, same toolbar, double, single. Uh, we can also pull, but we can't adjust the edges like we had on the other with a rounded rectangle. So if I just pull a uh, a square here, I come up to the top. Here's my color. I don't really want that. I'll take that. Now, go up to the layers palette and you see your uh, rectangle. So what you can do is come down to the bottom of the layers palette and you see the the uh, FX special effects. Remember we made a copy in Illustrator. Well here you have a you can do a drop shadow and get a, a fine tuning uh, panel right here. See what you see right here and it actually looks a little better. So you see multiply. I usually put that on normal 100%. Uh, look at the you know, figure out what you want the uh, how you want it to fall. So then again, now instead of going and uh, I'm coming back up here to the selection tool. Instead of going and uh, creating, you know, the same thing all over, I'm going to copy this. But to copy this, I'm going to stay right in the layers palette. So what I'm going to do. Is just select that, pull it down to this icon, which means that you're making a copy. So see, I just made a copy here. So now I just come to the, make another copy. You 
you know, and so on and so on. So now um, you want to put text in. I think that's going to be a little bit too big. We have the we have our uh, character open right here, and if you don't see it, it again, it's going to be window character. And this is always, if you're in Photoshop, a really good thing. And I notice that I have mine is 50, so those are pulled together a little bit more than they should be. I'm going to bring it to zero. Have to select everything first. Bring it to zero. You see, it pulls apart. And you you have all your fine tuning here for your text. And pull that. It's noticing the layers palette. It's on top. If it's down here, you're not going to see it. Or if it's down here, it's going to disappear because it went below it. So making the um, again, here's your line tool, and you know it's pretty much the same type of a setup that you had with uh, Illustrator. So with that, you can do a lot of fine tuning, uh, make different types of shapes here. You can't uh, merge the shapes the same way you can in uh, Illustrator, but you still have you still have uh, you know other options available to you. So what you're doing is just making a, a navigational scheme for your uh, for your website here, and you can use different types of. Uh, shapes to represent, you know, different things. So hopefully that's going to help. Thanks. Bye.